Hi, this is Scott Schubert, and today I'm going to show you how to see the hidden pictures in the Forex stock or commodities market. When you begin to have the experience that I'm about to demonstrate and describe to you, you're going to be very happy and excited to see how that translates into transforming the results that you get in your trading business. Why is this so extremely important? The reason is because in trading, the pictures that you see determine the choices that you make. And the choices you make determine the results that you get. So if you want to be able to see the pictures that enable you to make the choices that enable you to get the results, such as what we have gotten in the last couple of weeks in our trading community of over 750 pips, you'll be very interested in actually learning to develop a new visual skill in your trading business. There are many things that people choose to focus on in trading and traders around the world all look at the same market but they see different pictures and a lot of traders right now are looking at charts and seeing a picture that translates into chaos and frustration and a continual cycle of losing you want to see the pictures that enable you to make the choices that get the results that you want have you ever seen the paintings of this artist Bev Doolittle at first glance, it looks like a lot of snow covering a rocky mountain. But when you look more closely, you can see that there are hidden beautiful horses that are blending in and sort of camouflaged against the background. Here's another detail from a painting by Bev Doolittle just to show you the beauty of this horse camouflaged against a natural background. Have you ever seen these pictures called the magic eye which have a hidden 3D image? Now don't try to see it in this video but if you actually see one of these pictures in person or on the internet you can see what I'm talking about. This is an example of a type of a picture where you actually have to make an effort to change the way that your eyes focus in order to see a certain picture and when you do finally focus an amazing 3D image will emerge before your eyes. So this is a somewhat extreme example of a financial market. This happens to be the euro versus the US dollar that is set up in a way that the pictures that you need to see are very hidden and virtually impossible to actually see. Now those of you who are familiar with my training in the past know that if you have your chart set up with multiple indicator channels, that is you have different indicators that are below the price channel, this will actually distort the movement of price where you can't see it. It is impossible to see because the angle at which price is moving is altered in a way that all the price action looks more like channeling going sideways when in fact there are extreme movements of price and it is the angle and the shape of the price action that you need to see and you cannot see it this way. Also if you have a lot of indicators or if you have a lot of different types of lines no matter what kind of lines they are if you think that they're helping you in your trading chances are they may actually be distracting you from seeing what it is that you need to see, especially considering what your real purpose is, which is to make profit in trading. A lot of times, traders become fascinated with things that seem like they're showing you something, but when you really examine this whole process and you discover that there's probably no way to get more profit than the way that I reveal to you, which enables you to enter at the beginning of a trend and exit at the end of a trend in price action, then you'll realize that what may seem to be helping you in your trading may actually be distracting you and preventing you from getting the results that you want. It's a grand illusion. It's a sort of a paradox that you need to become aware of how some things appear to be showing you something but actually may not be helping you to improve the result of getting more profit. So no matter what kind of indicators or lines you have on your chart, you may want to consider trimming some of that off of there, removing some of that stuff so that you can see what I'm about to show you. So the first thing that you need to bring your attention to when you're looking at a chart, in my opinion, is the highs and the lows and the shape of the price action that's forming 
the lines in between as if you're you're looking at a sketch and what's a high and a low rather than coming up with a definition like the Tom DeMarc definition of a high and a low it's better to just look at the picture and look for what is obvious right here is a high and right here is a low and there are some intermediate highs and lows in between here some highs and lows and it should be fairly obvious where these highs and lows are so that you could just convert the chart into a sketch of lines. Now this is extremely important because this is what actually tells the whole story of why you would want to enter a trade or why you would want to exit a trade. One of the next things that you will notice is that if you just change the time frame you're going to see different highs and lows that may be subdivision highs and lows on this time frame just by going down shorter and shorter time frames now you can start to see new highs and lows emerging and again if I separate out this section right here and go to a shorter time frame I've gone from the daily to the eight hour now if I go down to the four hour and to the one hour I can see a completely different picture because there's more detail and there are different highs and lows now visible. Now some traders have asked me uh, if they should spend a lot of time studying Japanese candlesticks. Here's how I would answer that. If you were going to study how to write great literature or if you wanted to write a best-selling book, someone might say to you, in order to write a really good book you need to learn the alphabet. Well that's obvious but you wouldn't read a good book and scan through it looking for letter A or looking for letter G or something like that. Candlesticks only have a meaning in the context of this shape that is formed with highs and lows. So it can also be very distracting to focus on these Japanese candlestick patterns that oh this is a such and such uh, harami this is a engulfing bearish engulfing thing you know all these different things like that refer to one or two candles primarily and these candles really have a meaning only in the context of the overall pattern of highs and lows the next question that often comes up is that some traders are focusing on support and resistance that is these highs and lows are considered areas of support and resistance. And here's what I would uh, respectfully submit to you is that the concept of support and resistance also can be somewhat distracting. Because what do markets actually do? Let's say the market is going down and it turns right here. If this is the beginning of a trend, the next thing that it will do is break all previous resistance. And then, when it gets to the top of a trend, it will turn and break previous support. The concept of support and resistance would work really well if markets tend to do something more like this. This is not actually how markets normally tend to work. During a trend, there may be corrections that form sideways channels. At the end of a correction, previous resistance will be broken. At the next correction it may form a sideways channel and then previous resistance will be broken. But what is more likely to happen most of the time is that there could be a pattern more like this and so on. So the concept of support and resistance really has a more horizontal view of the market as does the concept of pivot lines and other types of horizontal lines. The idea that the market just moves to certain price levels and then either stops or it goes through, uh, this is actually somewhat distracting and somewhat irrelevant to what you need to be looking at in order to get the best results in trading. So if you remove all the clutter from your charts and then begin to focus on the highs and lows of price across a range of time frames, then you will be ready 
to go to the next step and this is in fact the most important thing that you need to see in order to enable you to really get good results in trading.